So moving on to Tim Stout, we're using Encyclopedia with the DAX 40. So we've got two European ind indices being talked about, which is excellent. A lot of requests for this kind of thing. So I'm bringing Tim in. Thank you, Richard. So thanks everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, what I wanted to cover um, today is how to use the Encyclopedia while trading another index um, other than the ES. So the DAX 40, is the um, German equivalent of, it's the German index. So the FDAX is the future on the German uh, stock exchange. And the DAX 40 is the biggest Euro nominated index um, in, well, in Europe. So it trades in Euro, whereas the FTSE that Tim Fairweather just presented trades in uh, British pounds. So it's the biggest index that trades in Euro and what I want to mention here, uh, and what I'm going to show as well, is that price action patterns, as you learn them in the course, bar 18 rule, opening wedges, opening an, an, an open that quickly runs to support the resistance, all of those standard rules and methods apply to trading another index, even in another time zone as well. Um, for people that don't know the DAX, the DAX trades in... Um, the normal FDAX, so that's 25 euros a point. It trades in a mini um, contract, so that's five euros a point. And it trades in a micro contract, which is uh, one euro a point. So you could roughly say with the DAX trading at 16,000, that two e-mini contracts is sort of equal to one FDAX contract in terms of size and volatility. So as I said, the DAX is trading currently around 16,000. It moves around 120 to 140 points a day. A typical scalp would be a minimum of 10 points. A typical swing would be a minimum of 40 points. But very often in uh, Europe mornings, you can get 80 to 100 points in, in uh, good opening swings. So what I want to do is I've taken just five random days out of the last month or so to show you different um, opening ranges or different midday ranges. Um, different patterns, and then I'm going to apply that to the encyclopedia to show you what to look for when there's an open and how then to find the matching pattern in the encyclopedia. All right, so let's go into uh, the screen there, um, open my chart. Can I open my chart? Yep. So first example here is 5th of July. So that was two days ago. And we had, as you can see yesterday, quite the normal bear trend, basically an all day bear trend. And today opens with a big gap down. So you have first bear bar um, after a big gap down, but huge tail above the bear bar. Bar two is a big bull bar. And then bar three is a follow through bull bar. So in a situation like this, you could be confused about, well, we had a gap down. So I'm expecting a bear trend from the open. But instead, I'm getting two big bull bars. Now, do I go long? Do I go short? What do I do here? And so at this point, I would say, let's look at the encyclopedia and follow the context for big gap down. Okay, so when we open the encyclopedia, and I have that ready here, we are looking for big gap down. So gap down has four common outcomes. And as you can see, and I think this slide was shown before, there are three outcomes that are basically bearish, and there's only one outcome that is basically bullish. So the first outcome is sort of a double top, looking to sell close to the moving average. The second example is a run up to the moving average, looking to sell close to the moving average. And the third example is a wet stop close to the moving average, and then trying to sell close to the moving average. So in 75% of the cases, if they were all distributed equally, selling close to the moving average would actually be the best idea if you have a big gap down. There's another version here where there's actually a, get, a good um, bull leg if you would get a wedge, um, no, a wedge bottom opening. Okay, so what we're gonna do on the particular chart is gonna spin it a little bit forward and trying to sell close to the moving average, right? Because that was probably the best pattern to follow. So are we close to the moving average on bar four? I think we're too far away here. 
And so we're waiting for the first bar to get us close to the moving average. Now, if I show you guys what followed on that day, you can exactly see that we went down and we went back up. And the first time that we hit the moving average, we had a bear bar closing on its low. So bar 17 here and then bar 18. At bar 18, you know that the high or the low of the day is probably in. That counts as well on the DAX. So there's a good sell bar here on bar, on bar 16. It doesn't trigger. So we don't go below uh, bar 16, 17. We don't go below bar 18 or 19. But here you can trigger the sell. We actually test the lows. So we don't hit the low. But it is already a nice 40 point swing. So that is already a swing on the DAX. And you can see that you can actually do that again. So selling close to the moving average. And this, in this case, the first time that you have a bear bar above the moving average, you can sell there. The second time you have a bear bar above the moving average, you can sell there. And what follows there is a new low of the day. If you pay attention here as well, every time we hit a new high, it's a lower high. Okay, so throughout the day, this bear trend is basically intact. These, bar, these bars, two and three, can lead to confusion. But the encyclopedia in this case, I think, would help us to say, no, in the case of a big gap down, the best thing to look for is actually selling bear bars close to the moving average. So better to wait, better to wait until the moving average comes closer to the price or price comes closer to the moving average. Both, both can happen. And I look to sell here. You got one swing already here. You could have a second swing here or just take a Walmart trade, you know, put the trade on, put your stop on, put your limit profit taking order on and just leave for a couple of hours and then see where you are when you come back. In this case, you've got multiple lows of the day and almost a um, no, good 60 point um, swing on, on the DAX. Uh, so I would say the encyclopedia in this case gave us the hint to not look for longs despite bar two and three, um, but keep looking for, uh, for shorts there. Okay, so next example, um, July 4. So July 4, uh, of course, was a closing day on uh, the US, but no, Germany is open. And so what, are, what type of opening are we getting? Well, yes, there was a big bear trend, but today's open is tight. Um, it's overlapping, it's bull bars, it's bear bars, it's an inside bar, it's an inside bull bar, followed by an outside bear bar. There's not really a trend, but it's a super tight trading range, right? This range is about 30, 40 points. The average range on the DAX is 120 to 160 points a day. And so 20 points is an extremely tight trading range. So it's better not to trade and certainly not with stop orders, but traders are wondering which pattern is likely to follow this. And um, now this is clearly an example of breakout mode. And so at this point, we look at the encyclopedia and go through some breakout mode patterns. So back to the encyclopedia. Let me make this smaller. And we go through breakout mode patterns. And I had this prepared but it's not opening. Breakout mode. And breakout mode is a 50-50 market. So we can have a bull breakout, we can have a bear breakout, we can have a failed bull breakout, and we can have a failed bear breakout. And this is important. The minimum, what you need is two reversals to have a breakout mode, and it can be small, and it can be very long. So it can take a long time, it can take a, sh a short time. So um, even a breakout itself, one bar might not be enough. You might need follow through um, or a bigger sign of breakout because small breakouts can actually just be continuation of the breakout mode. In a breakout mode situation, bulls and bears are equal. This is important. You need about two to three bull bars closing on their highs and above the trading range to expect a successful breakout and about a measured move up. Okay, so back to our chart. What we have is a bull bar. We don't have a breakout yet, but if we move to the next bar, we see a breakout. So this is a breakout above the breakout mode, but it's only one bull bar. The next bar 
is a bear bar and the next bar is a bear bar as well. So we know from the breakup mode slide that you need about two to three consecutive bull bars to speak of a successful breakout. So what could this be now? This could actually be a failed breakout and we could get a successful breakout below um, this range um, then down. And that is exactly what followed. So traders could be mistaken here by the big bull bar breaking up above that range. But the encyclopedia in this case helps you with that suggestion to say you need about two to three bull bars to speak of a successful breakout. So 10, 11, 12, three bull bars in a row should warn you of the possibility that the breakout is failing and that the range is more expanding and you could actually get a measured move down, which we ultimately got, uh, and even more than that, right? So selling maybe 18, selling maybe 19, definitely selling uh, somewhere 2021, 20, expecting that measured move down could lead you to at least 40 points. If you sold higher, you could even get maybe 80 points on just um, on just that uh, that pattern alone. All right. Um, next example that I just want to cover is June 30. So June 30, um, market opens with a small gap up, but within yesterday's range, um, starts to rally directly from the open. This might not be a clear trend, but it's consistently going higher and it's making higher highs and lows. So you need to wonder how strong is this breakout on a higher time frame. And so we could actually dive into the encyclopedia and look for a gap up bull trend from the open because we might be scared of buying up here because we're thinking it's going to reverse. But let's just look at the encyclopedia and say, um, what are the chances of higher prices versus the chances on uh, lower prices? And so when we go to the encyclopedia, we have gap up and bull trend from the open. So 9-1 tells us three possibilities. This was what Tim Fairweather was showing as well. So we're somewhere here at the bull trend from the open, right? We're somewhere in the beginning of that bull trend. So if it becomes a trend day, we can just enter almost anywhere and make money. If it becomes a reversal, we can just enter anywhere. And by the time the reversal takes place, we still have time to just switch, go from long to short and make up at least what we lost and, and even more, right? If it involves into a trading range, let's say we buy here, then we can still buy lower and make money as well. So the best thing to do, if we look at the three possibilities is to just hit the market and go long. And so, if we go back to our chart and we see how that progressed for the rest of the day, this is what followed, right? So we could have bought anywhere in here using our bull gap trend from the open pattern and just hold. And indeed it became a trading range later. But if you bought anywhere in here, you would have banked about 140 points on just buying and holding and selling at the end of the day. Okay? So again, don't short anywhere in here. None of these patterns told you to short. One of those patterns said it could evolve into a trading range or you could get a reversal. But by that time, you're somewhere here and you have lots of time to exit longs and switch to shorts. Next example, um, we're almost there, is June 21. So June 21, I want to show maybe not an opening example, not an opening range example, but um, traders are asking, like, if I trade DAX or if I trade FTSE or Nikkei or whatever type of different index, does it also do uh, midday reversals? So midday reversals on uh, E-mini are typically happening around bar 40, bar 45. Um, and so I have an example here on the DAX of June 21, uh, all the way up until bar 40, 42. And so uh, we had a, a gap down, bear bar, but we reversed back up. We had a sell climax on bar one, it reversed on bar three, it developed into some sort of a higher uh, trading range, and bar 40 is now leading up to a uh, wedge top lower high. So it's a lower high with bar 15, it's a wedge, three pushes, um, we're sort of at that wedge top, and we're wondering, could this be a lower high major trend reversal uh, on a midday reversal? And so again, we, uh, look into the encyclopedia to find examples of midday reversals. So midday reversal down. Um, let's look at this example. So you can see around bar 41, 
wedge top, small wedge within big wedge, nested wedge tops, bar 41 midday trend reversal down. Um, now this is different of course on DAX because there are not 81 bars to the day, there are more than 100 bars to the day on uh, the German market, um, but there are reversal patterns around bar 40 to uh, bar 50. And so another example could be here, nested wedge around the middle of the day, and then um, big bear bars selling. The third bear bar is actually quite profitable because you can see a lot more down after three bear bars. So that tells us, and it gives us an indication that if we start to see consecutive bear bars, it could actually be beneficial to start selling here. And so what do we get here? Well, we, we're getting three bear bars. Normally you would be scared here to sell because you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm at the low of a trading range. Um, we might bounce and we might go up here, but with the extra context of the encyclopedia, you could actually say, no, this is going down further. This is a bigger reversal. We're gonna be in here for a new low of the day. And this is what followed. So you had a tremendous big bear trend leading not only to a new low of the day, but many, many uh, more points lower, about 120 points you could make by just selling bar 45 close and then hold until almost the end of the day, um, close to bar 100. So another example here where um, the midday reversal pattern applies as well to the DAX, it applies to the FTSE, it applies to other indexes as well, and then selling and holding actually based on the encyclopedia patterns would help you to find a very, very nice trade there. Last example that we'll go through is um, opening sell climax. So here we have May 25, um, again on the DAX, and um, we had a bear day yesterday, so we went down quite far, and um, it was a big bear breakout, but the day closed not far from its low. So usually if you have a big bear day, you don't close very far from the low of the day, chances are that the next day will actually test the low of that day. So bar one opens up um, a little bit above, so you actually have a gap up, but it immediately sells down. So you have a big up, big down type of pattern on bar one, um, and it's a sell climax, right? It's a big sell climax with, together with bars two and three. So the sell climax continues. There might be a little wedge here. Um, bar seven is another huge sell climax. But eight is a sort of a flag, and then nine is another third big sell climax. So you have an opening after a bear day with consecutive sell climaxes. Now, consecutive sell climaxes is another pattern that you can actually find in the encyclopedia. So let's jump to the last example there consecutive sell climaxes. They're on um, the part 42 here. And consecutive sell climaxes may be here on the open. Um, so you're wondering what's going to happen. Can we can we get more lower after a sell climax? What are the chances of sideways? What are the chances of a reversal? Well, consecutive sell climaxes on the open, it could either have some sort of a final flag, and the final flag will be a magnet if we go lower, or it could actually involve more into a channel or a trading range. And if it's really parabolic, you could actually get a bigger reversal. Our opening reverse, our opening looks a little bit like this. Maybe our final flag is not so many bars, maybe it's just one bar. So what we're looking for is some sort of a bar like this. So consecutive cell climaxes, flags into the cell climaxes, and then a big bull bar um, closing on its high or at least above the midpoint, and then buy above um, that bull bar. So what does the chart say? The chart says you have a climax, you have a little bit of a flag here, a little bit of sideways, you have another climax, you have a final flag bar eight, and then another cell climax bar nine, and now you have a big bull bar closing on its high, almost on its high completely, and so you place a buy stop uh, one tick above bar 10, and this is what followed you catched exactly the low of the day and it rallied um, at least 90 points. It rallied almost 100 points from your entry point. So another example of 
cell climaxes that might trigger you to find it short, but in this case, it was actually a reversal pattern with the encyclopedia, it would point you to exactly this bar and you could um, trail your stop every time you have a new high, you trail your stop to the next lower high and you would only start taking profits around this area or you would get yourself stopped out at uh, the next lower high. So those are, I think, a couple of examples of how to effectively use the encyclopedia while trading, both at the open but also um, at the close of the day or at the middle part of the day on another index than just eMini. And I'm positively convinced that Encyclopedia works and all of the pattern work on commodities, on indexes, on anything that trades with enough volume to make uh, price action patterns happen. Um, that was what I wanted to share, Richard. Um, my name is Tim Stout. Thank you for listening and I'll give word back to uh, Richard. Thanks, Tim. Much appreciated. And uh, see you later.